Hello world, I am Jake Short, husband, father, realtor, and former home inspector. In this video, I wanted to tell all of you a few things that you may not already know. Before I entered the realm of real estate as a home inspector seven years ago, I had no idea about these little tidbits. I feel like this could mean that many of you out there may not know this either. So here we go. Have you ever been driving around our neighborhood and all of a sudden you see a for sale sign in a yard just like this one? Perhaps from the passenger seat you hear, honey, stop the car. And then whether you are actively searching for a home or not, you really want to know more about the property and maybe even start the ball rolling on buying the property. Most people, including myself seven years ago, would instantly call the phone number on the sign, just like that. I want to tell you all right now that legally speaking, any real estate salesperson that is licensed in the state that you're seeing the sign can help you get the info on that place and get the ball rolling on buying it. For instance, if you see my name on a sign, but you have a family member or a friend that's a licensed real estate person, you don't have to call me just because my name's on the sign. No, no, that's not how it goes. This also goes the other way too. If you're driving around and you do see a sign with another agent's name on it, or even another agent from a different real estate company, you can still call me to get the info on that property and start the process of making the purchase. It doesn't matter whose name is on the sign. It doesn't matter what color the sign is. It doesn't matter what shape the sign is. It can even be a for sale by owner sign. Any real estate agent can help you with the transaction on a property that's for sale. Now, some of you may be thinking that the listing agent whose name is on the sign might be the better person to call because they may know the property or the seller a little more intimately. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that you're wrong. Instead, I am going to tell you that the seller is obligated to disclose everything they know about the property they are selling. Thus, any agent can help you gather the information about the property you're looking at. So why is that agent's name even on the sign? I'll tell you. In most states in the US, it is completely legal for one real estate agent to represent both a seller and a buyer in the same transaction. This is called dual agency. In these scenarios, the agent is responsible for talking to both parties during the negotiations and the duration of the transaction. In this agent's dealings with the parties on either side of the table, they must uphold the fiduciary duties of loyalty, obedience, disclosure, accounting, and here's the big one, confidentiality. This means that when this one agent hears from the seller that the lowest amount they'll take for the sale is, let's say, $300,000, then that agent cannot disclose that number to the buying party that they're also communicating with. If they do, that would break the obligation of confidentiality to the seller party, selling party. As realtors, we have a code of ethics that we abide by. If this code is ever broken, then that, that's when a realtor gets into real trouble. While I would love to say that all realtors keep to our code of ethics, I must also say that all realtors are also humans, and humans can sometimes make mistakes. So, my advice regarding dual agency situations is to make sure that you get to know the agent whose name is on the sign before you sign any documents. Or, you can reach out to a realtor that you know and trust just to make sure that all parties are taken care of, but especially that you are taken care of. Here's more info that you may not know. If you hadn't realized, I've previously referred to the other humans in my profession by a few different names. It's important to realize that once a human gets licensed in their state, they are called real, or that, sorry, real estate salespersons. This term is synonymous with real estate agent or just agent for short. However, not all agents are realtors. To be a realtor, an agent must agree to a long list of ethics and moral standards that we must uphold to in all of our dealings. I highly recommend that you make sure that any agent that you're speaking with 
can and does refer to themselves as a realtor. One last snip of info just for you. I truthfully did not know this until I became a realtor. First, consider this. In a real estate transaction, technically speaking, you as the client are kind of the boss. And we as realtors are doing the work for you. And all the choices that need to be made in the transaction are yours. Now, when someone's looking for a job, what do they usually have to do before they start working? Any thoughts? If any of you are thinking or mentioning getting interviewed, then good thinking. As a realtor myself, I encourage all of you to interview several realtors before deciding which one you want to use. Think about it. You're going to be communicating with this person for several weeks, sometimes even a few months. Many conversations will be shared and oftentimes many emotions will need to be handled or confronted. Sometimes it may even be relevant what the realtor did for work prior to getting their real estate license. For instance, I was a home inspector before I got my real estate license. I can't tell you how many times this has proved to be invaluable for both myself and my clients. It's, all, it's also going to matter how well the agent knows the area you're looking in. It's going to matter who the agent knows in the area too. Good, reliable people that make good, reliable repairs are not always easy to find. When it, it's going to matter what an agent does for fun, especially if you're the complete opposite. I encourage all of you to shop around for your realtor. Ask questions. Try to find someone that you will actually click with and click well with. That will likely make your transaction go a lot smoother and perhaps even add some fun into it. As a realtor myself, I will tell you that the time that I spend physically with my clients is the best part of my job. That's when I get to have fun and enjoy my company and thus enjoy my work. When I'm not with my clients, I'm usually doing paperwork, which paperwork basically makes me a desk monkey. I would, I would much rather be hanging out and chatting about pretty much anything instead of sitting at my desk with papers. Wouldn't you? So really, give me a call, ask me all the questions you can think of, and let's hang out. Maybe buy a house or two. That's what I'm here for, guys, to help you with what you need. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. In fact, leave me a comment with a question or a request for my next video. I'd love to see your suggestions. Until next time, everyone, I'm Jake Short, your realtor forever. And remember, with me, you can always expect better. Goodbye for now, world.